Hey, welcome back to another Suburban Explorers episode. Sometimes um, when you're looking for things to explore, it's right under your nose. There's historical markers in every town, and yeah, I know what you're saying. You've seen that, you know what it's about, everybody in town knows what it's about, so what's the point of going there and doing an expedition? But you never know. Sometimes the most obvious things that are right under our noses have even more stories to tell. I lived here for many years and only about 25 years ago I found out that there was an actual uh, relic Indian mound in this area. You know, the Ormond Mound was constructed by the prehistoric people of this area sometime after the Annus Day 800. The mound is preserved as one of the finest and most intact burial mounds in Florida. This happened through the efforts of the community that worked to save this site in 1982. This is, of course, right here in the city of Ormond Beach, Florida. And it's part of the Ormond Beach Historical Trust. The mound itself was here for many years, obviously, since who knows when, how far back. But its contents were only discovered when the owners of a, this particular lot of land were planning to build a house in here and the bulldozers began to scrape the side of the mound in order to eliminate it, get rid of it, and then bones began to fall out of it. Yeah, there was basically, there were just skulls and limbs and everything just coming out of there, uh, pr pretty much all the way to there, right there. And they had to stop because by law, any time that they find human remain, that's it. You have to stop construction. It took quite a bit of time before the city decided that this was a historic site and or oh, prehistoric to be more specific. They had to have the coroner come over and find out that this were not a crime scene, but they had to bring archaeologists from the University of Florida in Gainesville to come over and examine them. And what they did find out was that these were actually prehistoric remains. And one interesting thing they did is that they found out that it was laid out like a cake in layers building up all the way to the top. And the bones have already been cleaned out of flesh. So all the skulls were piled side by side and all the femurs and other bones were also on top of the layer and then dirt and then the same repetition all the way to the top. So the ones at the bottom down here are the oldest ones, the oldest remains, and the ones at the very top will be the newest remains. The next step for us suburban explorers would be to find out more about the people that are buried here, the Native Americans that live by the river, fish, the live of the land itself, the hunted deer, and now, of course, they're gone. Who specifically were these people and when did they come to this area? Of course, when did they disappear from here? These bones aren't just bones. These are people. These are the, the remains of the last of the Tamuqua Indians who lived in that area for thousands of years, probably, all the way up until the Spaniards showed up and wiped them out, um, partly by accident, you know, with their European diseases. These human beings, these first people of Florida, who were the Tamuqua? Why did they live here? You know, what, what caused this, you know, what caused this to be the final burial place of of this people. We have uh, April 16. So far, I don't see anything. So we'll start looking and see what we can see.
so I'm doing some research here, trying to find, you know, uh, more information about the Tumukin Indians, Tumukwa, and, uh, who were buried in that mound that uh, Raphael, uh, explored. And, uh, so I'm just doing a little research here and just putting in various search terms. Now you can see some information here about the Florida natives, and it gives some pretty good information, and... So and I'm, I'm just kind of jumping around and finding different bits of information. And I stumbled on this anthropological paper from the Smithsonian Institution um, and uh, it, written in 1955, I believe. Um, it's I can't explain to you how I found this. I mean, this is what happens when you go down the rabbit hole. Sometimes you don't even know how you got where you went, where you were going. But this is seems to be talking about a whole different mound I thought it was about the mound we we were exploring, but this seems this is talking about a mound on the east side of the Halifax River. You know, there's no mound on the east side of the Halifax River. It's it's on the west side. It's clearly marked, but this is implying that there's a mound, another mound, and so I'm gonna explore this deeper and see if I can figure out what they're talking about. But as far as I know, there's nobody know nobody knows of any mounds in the on the east side of the Halifax River in Ormond Beach. Um, so this is really interesting. This morning, early enough because it is hot here in Florida, I'm heading towards the beach side to see if I can walk 1.3 miles and locate the tentative location of the beach mound. That's the Ormon Bridge. That's the location of the beginning point of the walk that I'm going to take, roughly one mile south of here. I'm going to use a pedometer to measure the distance from the map that we receive from the Smithsonian Institution. From here, I plan to walk about one mile, maybe a little bit more than that. The reason why I'm doing this is because there's no actual address, no location as to where the mound was. All we have are the descriptions that the archeologists put on the report to the Smithsonian Institution in 1933, indicating that the mound was on the left side of the road going south. In other words, on the east side of the actual road itself. Well, the, the end of the search brought us here. This is the location, as far as we know, of the Mystery Mound. The people that live in these two houses across the street from this point probably don't even know that in 1934, an Indian burial mound was located pretty much right here. Now it's all built up, of course, there's houses on both sides, there's the street, and the river is still where it was before. So, little do they know that we have now the location of the mound. And of course, the skeletons that were here, all the people that were buried here, are now in an archive in Maryland, and uh, they're not here anymore. But we know history goes on, and now you know. I got a house built on top of a cemetery is always going to be a poltergeist appeal. You know? I know, right? <laughs> well, Everybody knows that movie. You know, so. I know, it's true. It's like you didn't, you only moved the headstones. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen any, any ghosts in that house? Like, uh, hey, you know what they those guess? archaeologists did everything they could to save what was left of that. Um, of that burial mound and, and, and the artifacts and the remains that were found in it and to spirit them away so that they could be at least be preserved with dignity um, even though the site itself has been leveled for for home construction. I, I liked what they did with like the first mound where they left the bones where they were. They respected the burial ground. So that's it for this episode of the Suburban Explorer, uh, a tale of two burial mounds. The Tamuqua are gone but not forgotten. I would like to quote from an editorial written by Mary McLaughlin, a reporter for the news journal, local newspaper, written in 1982 after the uh, discovery of the uh, remains of those uh, Indians. She said, you never hear them refer to as people. They are craniums, 
mandibles, occipital, femurs, and tibias. Articulated individuals, but not mother, daughter, father, son, as they once were. When their hearts fluttered and stopped, their families grieved and buried them with ritual and respect for the last great mystery in the life of many. As custom required, small treasures and important things, beads, arrows, pots of herbs, they all went to the earth with them. Of all things, they trusted the earth most. He had given them food and shelter for their bodies. It would be a safe place to keep those bodies and the mystery whose boundary they had crossed. The earth was mounted over them, grave and monument at once. They and their secrets were safe for eternity. But history and eternity are sides of the same coin, spinning when it passes from one hand to another, both values change. One culture's sacred monument becomes another's obstruction. The final mystery becomes a temporary curiosity, and eternity is measured by the threat of a bulldozer. And so they are unburied. Wind still blows off the river and chills our skins as it chilled theirs. It is surely the only sound as the sun, moon, and stars would be the only sights they would know in a world to which their bones are being exposed. The chanting voices of their people against the green fabric of earth sounds accompany them to this place. Their unbearing proceeds through the clutter and clamor of airplanes, automobiles, motorcycles, garbage trucks, pile drivers, and passing radio rock music. Enough to wake the dead where they're not already being roused. In our infinitely advanced society, we put our mothers, daughters, fathers, and sons into the earth with their trinkets when they cross that mysterious boundary. But having lost elemental contact with the earth, we don't trust it as our less enlightened primitive culture did. We put our trust in preservatives, metal, concrete, and marble, hoping the coin of eternity will spin off of them. 500 years from now, in whatever eerie wind and strange clamor that may exist then, will other races hold our craniums, mandibles, femurs, and tibias, sift through our trinkets and wonder about the primitive culture that produced such beings? It is possible, but long before them, we will have learned the answer to the great mystery, and all else may be irrelevant. And that does it for another Suburban Explorers expedition. Um, I hope you guys are going to get out there and send us your expeditions. It doesn't matter how big or small. It doesn't have to be a big epic thing. It could be just something cool artifact that you found in your backyard. Send us a video clip, and if we use it on the show, we will totally give you guys a uh, Suburban Explorers t-shirt and, uh, and feature you, like I said, on the show. So, not bad. All right, until the next expedition, keep exploring. <laughs>